Hi guys, welcome to Goodwill Gate to IIT. I am Prateek. Uh, these are the series of lectures we have for all the people who are uh, preparing for Gate Aerospace Engineering. Now, this is Module Two, in which we'll be covering about aircraft structures. Module One was aircraft propulsion. Now, in this present lecture, uh, I'll be discussing about the complete syllabus for aircraft structures. Uh, what books we need to follow? What topics we should focus more on? And uh, topic wise from where we can refer means what books you should follow for a particular topic and then the weightage of the topic so when we say aircraft structures this is the most important topic we can say or most important unit for uh, a gate aerospace means the weightage is very high like you can say this is can go up to 20 marks so 20 marks in gate is like very very important so uh, just to begin with uh, i want to show you the syllabus which is mentioned online so if you go through any website and look for the syllabus, you will find something like this. So I will be deviating from this. I mean some in some other sequence and with some different headings. So let me go through this quickly and then we'll start. So the first topic is strength of materials. So when we say strength of materials, we'll be talking about basic stress and strain, stress and strain transformation, Mohr circle, principal stresses, Hooke's law. What is plane stress, plane strain condition, theory of failures, Castellano theorem, what are statically determinate and indeterminate trusses and beams, and something about columns. This is the first unit, which is they have mentioned as strength of materials. Then they, uh, they have mentioned flight vehicle structures. In this, you are talking about torsion, bending, flexual shear, shear flow, shear center, all these things will come. Then the vibration part, which is free and forced for one degree of system and two degree of freedom system, which is free only. Then they have mentioned few special topics like vibration of continuous beams, theory of elasticity, equilibrium and compatibility equations, airy stress function and all. So what I'll do is, uh, we're not going to follow all this in the same sequence. I'll follow a sequence which actually generalizes what is the complete uh, stu structure you can say we have for gate people. So in what sequence we should go? And what actually your syllabus replicates means what is actually showing why you are having these topics in your gate exam. All right, so let's begin this. So I'll start with with the first topic. So when I say first topic, I'll give you a proper sequence. In this fashion, we should start studying aircraft structures, and then we should move forward. So when I say first topic, first unit, we'll always say is basic elasticity all right so i'll say first unit is basic elasticity now when i say basic elasticity in basic elasticity what you need to see is what are stresses and strains what is principal stress moho circle many things which are covered in your syllabus also but what sequence you should follow for this so when i say basic elasticity first thing what you need to understand is what is stress and to be very precise, you should know what is stress tensor. All right, so you should know that there are normal stresses, shear stresses, what is the direction at which they are acting, what is the sense, whether they are tensile or compressive, and all these things will come under this. So in this, uh, when you prepare for gate, this is a very good shortcut for calculating principal stresses. Keep this in mind. So this is very, very important topic if you understand stress tensor. Means all the sign convention will come under this. Once you have this, once you know about stresses, you will be deriving equilibrium equations. Alright, so we have stress, we know what is stress, we know what are equilibrium equations. So for, to be very frankly, I will say like forces in x direction are 0, forces in y direction are 0, forces in z direction are 0 and movements are 0, something like these things. But it should be in some stress form that we'll see when we talk about particularly deeply in basic elasticity. Now, let's now discuss what is this labels and why we are studying all these things. Once equilibrium equations are done, what we'll do is we'll directly go to strains. What is strain? What are different type of strains means normal strain or uh, what are the different types of strains we have? All right. So strain we have in like corresponding to stress we have a strain which is connected by Hooke's law but for time being I'm not saying Hooke's law and anything you should know what is stress you should know what is strain is it fine 
so normal strain shear strain all these things will study in this now once you are done with this we'll talk about strain displacement relation all right so we have strain displacement relation once we are done with strain displacement relation what topic which we need to study in this after exactly this topic is hooke's law or constitute relation so it's basically generalized hooke's law not stresses directly proportional to strain but some poisson's effect should also come into this with the proper 3d stress system so you have generalized hooke's law which is actually a relation connecting stress and strain so you need to understand what is the relation connecting stress and strain so hooke's law will come once we are done with this we actually came to know there are six stresses unknowns in tensor you will find nine but there are six independent stresses there are six independent strains and there are actually three displacements u v and w displacement in x displacement in y and displacement in z direction so if i'll say in all you have six stresses you have six strains and you have three displacements so in any structure problem you have 15 unknowns all right any structure problem whatever analysis you want to do whether it is aircraft whether it is automobile it is bridge fan anything if you want to do any stress analysis for that or you want to calculate stresses or where it will going to fail you need to compute these 15 unknowns at each and every point on the body all right but if you want to solve 15 unknowns you should know 15 you should have 15 equations right this is the set of 15 equations we have there are three equilibrium equations there are six strain displacement relations and there are six hooke's law equation or stress strain relations so in all these 15 equations we have and 15 unknowns we have you solve this simultaneously you will get the value of these 15 unknowns and you know the system now you actually know where your system will going to fail all right but it looks straightforward it's not actually so straightforward because it's very difficult to solve 15 equations uh, in one go simultaneously and that too for a complete body we cannot do this analysis state, uh, analytically so for this we'll require certain softwares like fem and all so you'll be doing mesh and all these things so we'll come to all of these important things in the coming lectures but for time being what is the topics which you should know and why you are studying all these things you should understand in this lecture all right once this is done then you should know how to calculate principal stresses all right so principal stresses you can compute from this also this is the reason i have written a shortcut it's a very easy method for computing the principal stresses if you know these stresses you need not to go by a formula so this is basically you will be deriving a formula for this once you know principal stresses we actually know principal plane also in this once this is known you know your principal stresses you form a stress system and then calculate these stresses once these stresses are known you can compute principal strain also it is not required to always calculate stresses first and then strain we can do that but there are some relations with by which you can directly calculate principal strain without computing principal stresses it is possible all right so once you are done with this we'll talk about moho circle all right so when i say moho circle moho circle is exactly the same thing see you're calculating your motive is to just keep this in mind your motive in structures is always to calculate the principal stresses all right once you know principal stresses we'll see how we can uh, we can say make a structure we can withstand the loads if you know your principal stresses if you know where your structure is going to fail so in the process you have three different methods you can go by tensor form you can go by the analytical form like you can you have a specific formula for calculating it or you can grow go, uh, go graphically like more circle and all these three methods will give you the principal stresses now we'll see why principal stresses are the most important stresses we want to calculate all right once this moho circle is done in this topic itself we should study thin spherical and cylindrical pressure vessels and cylindrical pressure vessels all right so i'll say pressure vessels once this is done we'll look for compatibility conditions what are compatibility conditions or compatibility equations 
Correct. So, guys, compatibility equations. Usually, people feel that they are the part of 15 equations. But I told you, there are three equilibrium equations, six strain displacement, and six Hooke's law. Compatibility equation is not is are never going to use compatibility equations to solve for this 15 unknowns. They are set of six different equations for a 3D stress problem. If these equations are satisfied, then only structure is possible. Uh, if you want to understand this in more precise way, we can say these are like continuity equation in fluid. If continuity equation is satisfied, then only flow is possible. So in structures, if compatibility equations are satisfied, then only structure is possible. And uh, if I'll say compatibility equation and equilibrium equation together, say we'll say these are governing equations for the complete structure. All right. So in detail, we'll move forward. But... These are the topics you should always focus when you're talking about basic elasticity. So keep this in mind. In the end, your final motive is to calculate principal stresses. Whatever topic you'll study after this, but your final motive is to calculate principal stresses. That is the main motive. After this, you'll talk about a stress function. Now, this is one approach by which you can compute stresses but keep this in mind it only works for a 2d system you cannot work this with uh, a 3d system and in between we should know what is plane stress and what is plane strain conditions all right so these are the topics we should always consider in basic elasticity. But if you go to the syllabus they are mentioning, right? They have divided this into special topics. They are saying some topics are in strength of materials and some, some topics are in flight vehicle structures. But this is the way we should always proceed. So this is the sequence. If you understand this, your unit one is done, which is basic elasticity. All right. So these are the topics we have in the first unit, which we'll be going through. So I'll come to the next unit. So once this is done, I'll come to the books and uh, the weightage of each unit. But let me let me finish the syllabus part first. Then the next very, very important unit, which you should go for, is bending. Right? So I hope all of you know this, what is bending, uh, what we need to compute in this, what are the quantity we should consider. So when I say bending, right, make this as a huge topic. This is the stomach topic for your structures. So most of your aircraft structures will deal on bending more precisely. Why? Because we have aircraft wings, right? So if you have an aircraft and you have wings on both sides. So if you consider this, this is fixed here. So wing is acting as a cantilever beam basically. So you have lift acting here, weight is acting downwards and all these things. So it's basically a cantilever beam, which you'll represent something like this. True, right? We always solve. So for this reason, bending is the most important topic, as we say, for the complete aircraft. Or as an aerospace engineer, if you are good in structures, you should be good in bending. So in bending itself, we should consider what is shear center, what is shear flow, why we are calculating shear center and shear flow and all these things. Right. So in bending, what we should do is we should always go for unsymmetrical bending first. Then you should convert this unsymmetrical bending into symmetrical bending. And then you should understand what do you mean by pure bending. Now in the process, we'll be talking about Euler's beam, what is Euler beam, what is Timoshenko beam and all these things. So that is the understanding. I means what is unsymmetrical, what is symmetrical, what is pure bending, what is the difference between Euler beam and uh, Timoshenko beam. All these things will come in the process. So you should first see these things. In the process, you should consider this as a separate topic, moment of inertia. You should always know how to calculate moment of inertia of all the sections. When I say all the sections, you should know how to calculate moment of inertia of thick sections. You should know how to calculate moment of inertia of thin sections. And you should know how to calculate moment of inertia of structurally idealized. When I say structurally idealized, we are talking about boom sections. Because whatever equations you have derived for all these three cases, you just need to pick the value, whether it is thick, 
pick that moment of inertia if it is thin pick that moment of inertia if it is boom section pick that moment of inertia so only thing which we need to play in bending is moment of inertia and we will actually understand what do you mean by moment of inertia we are always calculating moment of inertia as i x x i y y I, um, IZ which is basically polar moment of inertia and what is IXY but why we are calculating this what is the physical significance what is the difference between IXX IYY IZ and uh, IXY all these things we should understand in this particular topic once this is done you should understand what is shear force and bending moment diagram we have all done this in uh, basic strength of material course but in gate they are asking strength of uh, in they are asking shear force and bending moment diagrams directly so we should also focus on this particular topic shear force and bending moment diagram all right once shear force and bending moment diagrams you have studied we should always directly go to deflection problems you should understand how to calculate deflection of a beam like a simply supported beam cantilever beam or indeterminate beams fix from both ends propped cantilevers all these things means you should understand how to calculate the deflection of beams but when i say deflection of beams we should never ever go for strength of material approach which is mclaurin's method because if you go by that method one numerical in your gate exam will take like say 15 minutes if you are very fast it will take 5 or 10 minutes but for two marks you cannot spend 5 or 10 minutes right so in this you should understand how to solve these problems quickly so we should go for virtual work concept this will give your solution deflection problem in one minute without any calculation mistake all right so this is very important you should understand how to calculate deflection of beams now when you have understood all these things in all thin walled sections you'll be talking about what is shear flow in this itself you should study this once you understand shear flow you should understand what is shear center how to compute it how, what are the properties so most prob most of the problems are basically dependent upon the properties of shear center and shear flow so rather than solving a problem for half an hour which are given in mexen and all you should understand the properties so most of the gate problems basically you need not to pick the pen also if you know if you understand the topic you can directly tick the options all right if it is a numerical then anyhow we need to solve using the formulas all right so once this is done your shear flow and shear center is done so what we have calculated we have calculated the deflection of beams we have seen um, what is shear force and bending moment diagrams see we have covered all this right we have seen on different types of bending how to calculate moment of inertia what is shear force and bending moment diagram now we have seen what is shear center what is shear flow how to calculate deflection of beams all these things we have already covered all right so if few topics are left when we go to the detailed of bending we can cover in that if i means if i leave something in between so after doing all these things in this you'll be doing everything like thick thin as well as boom sections like structure the idealized sections you'll be calculating all these things for all now the, after this the third unit we should go for is torsion all right so torsion very very important unit but keep this in mind in torsion what topics we need to study is the basic equation of torsion all right equation same thing you are actually studying in bending also in symmetrical and symmetrical that is the equation of uh, bending so equation of torsion like t by j that equation all right so understand what is angular twist now because we are talking about thin walled sections again we again need to talk about shear flow so when we say talk about shear flow you need to study about brett bato theory or brett bato formula or theory i'll say all right keep this in mind guys whatever may be the topic is whether you are talking about bending or whether you are talking about torsion or axial loading or columns your main motive is always to compute stresses so whatever equation you are using whatever shear flow problems you are doing what is brett bardot theory you are using in the end your motive is to calculate stresses all right just keep this in mind so these are different ways of calculating stresses that's it but in the end i will be calculating stresses i'll tell you the root how it works all right so go for this then you should go for shafts in series and shafts in parallel shafts in series and in parallel all right so what 
things will remain constant, what things we need to add up series and parallel, you know this concepts from electrical, right? Resistances and all on vibration, we have stiffnesses. Same few concepts we're going to apply in torsion while, when we have shafts in series and shafts in parallel. And there are a few good applications in aircraft when we talk about shafts in series and shafts in parallel. Is it? Then we need to compare what is the difference between thick and thin circular cross sections or any cross section not circular cross section any cross sections and to be very precise if I'll divide this it should be closed and open thin cross sections this is very very important how to calculate see in this your main motive is to calculate like bending you need to calculate polar moment of inertia in bending you are calculating moment of inertia right in this, we'll be calculating polar moment of inertia. So there is only one equation. You just go to polar moment of inertia corresponding to the cross section, calculate the value of J, and then you have your stresses. If it is thin closed, then we need to think for uh, how to compute shear flows because now the shear flow will be induced and we'll be calculating stresses using breadbath theory. That we'll discuss when we talk about torsion in detail. But these are the topics you should focus first. Once this torsion is done, the next topic you should go is columns. Now I'm not going in detail in columns. You need to study all the four cases, all the four cases like pin, pin, pin free, fixed from both ends, fixed from one end, free from other end. All these things, four cases we need to study. And your motive is just to calculate critical load. All right, at which load your column will go into buckle. That is the main motive in column that you should understand all right i'll come to the books and all this. and the very favorite topic for a for gate people is vibration when i say vibration you need to study one degree of freedom system damped undamped and in both you should study forced as well as free in both the cases then we should go for two degree of freedom system but keep this in mind in this you will be having only free system in your analysis is it fine then you should think about continuous systems that means you are not you are having infinite degree of freedom system now continuous systems actual so your aircraft structure is a continuous system all right so these are the topics you should cover. Now, if I go to this, uh, apart from this, what you should understand is what is determined. It means don't consider this as a separate unit, but these are the extra topics. We should cover them uh, apart from these units, which are did. What is the difference between determinate and indeterminate structure? What is the difference between determinate and indeterminate structure? And you should also understand uh, trusses, beams and all these things we'll cover. Very, very important unit. Guys, you should not miss this. Okay, I'll show you this in a different sheet. Alright, so next unit, which I'll say is seventh, is theory of failures. Now in this I am not mentioning one misses, stress, ka, maximum principle stress, maximum strain energy, distortion energy which is also known as one misses. All these, there are five theories which we need to study. Sixth one is Mohr circle which is not a part of a syllabus but we will discuss, we will touch upon shortly what is Mohr circle theory. But main thing is you should focus on uh, one misses and Triska. That is, these are very very important. Alright, so I am not writing all these theories but we will study all these. And the last topic, which I'll consider as the very important topic for structure understanding is strain energy. You should understand what do you mean by strain energy and you should be in a position to calculate strain energy for any structure. If you do that, you can use many energy methods like you can use Rayleigh Ritz, you can use Castellano theorem, you could, we are actually using virtual work also. So strain energy is an important uh, parameter. You can directly go for Castellano theorem and calculate the deflection of beams if you know this. Alright, so this is basically, now I'll just quickly tell you why we are actually uh, going in this. 
so i'll just give you a simple example so that you can understand why we are going in the sequence and why we should always do this let's say you have a structure a 3d structure all right something like this so what you're doing is you're applying a load p in this direction is it i'm going to pull this with some force f i'm going to provide a torque t and i want you to now i can apply under i can apply movement also but this p is producing movement I means many things we can produce let's say you have all these load conditions where this structure will going to fail this is your gate slavers if you can design this you are prepared for your you are prepared for your gate slavers how i'll tell you this p about this end will produce a movement let's say length is l all right so what you'll do is you'll directly go to you'll direct go to your bending identify which type of bending is this calculate moment of inertia depending upon the cross section and in the end calculate the stresses all right so what you have done in this problem because of bending you have calculated the stresses now what you'll do you go to this axial load because of this axial load you calculate your stresses then you go to your torsion you calculate your stresses the corresponding stresses what are induced is it fine so you have shear stress because of torsion you have normal stress because of this bending shear stresses are we are neglecting if you consider shear stresses consider that also consider your normal stresses because of axial load calculate all these stresses and then form a stress system something like this this is known as a 3d stress system and mark all the stresses along with the x y and z plane do that once you have this you are in a position now you can form the stress tensor if you want like this now we'll be discussing this guys i'm just giving you a rough idea something like this and compute the principal stresses now once you know principal stresses you should go to theory of failures and then design your structure what is the diameter which is needed so that this complete structure what is the diameter needed so that this complete structure which stand this torsion load as well as this bending load as well as this axial load i hope you understand so any structure will have either axial load or it will have some bending problems or it will have some torsion or it will have some compressive load so it can act as a column depending upon the length of the structure so all these things you you are actually studying individually so you are studying bending you are studying torsion you are studying columns all right and you are studying about vibrations also which is dynamics part and then you are combining everything and you are going to elasticity elasticity will give you principal stresses you pick this principal stresses you go to theory of failures and then design your structure i hope you understand why this is your gate syllabus so all these individual topics right bending torsion and columns axial loading all these things uh, all these things are basically your motive is to calculate stresses from all of them once you have calculated stresses for all of them take all those stresses to your first unit which is basic elasticity using all the relations you calculate principal stresses once you have principal stresses go to theory of failures and design your structure now this structure can be complete aircraft it can be locally aircraft wing it can be aircraft tail it can be an automobile chassis it can be automobile body it can be a fan it can be a bottle anything what are the loads acting just take those loads accordingly calculate the stresses calculate your principal stresses go to theory of failures and design your structure all right so this is the complete syllabus we have now in all uh, if i'll summarize all these things right these topics guys there is no important or less important top in structures this is this variation complete structures i am saying will go from 20 to 25 now you can imagine the importance of this particular subject so if you are good in structures actually you are qualified true right then you can score so 20 to 25 so if i'll say elasticity elasticity can go from 4 to 6 or 4 to 5 also you can say 4 to 6 it depends whether they are asking one mark problem or two mark problem bending please directly say this is minimum 10 marks because you have shear force bending moment diagram stresses compute computation directly and then you have deflection problems you have shear flow shear center everything will come on the bending all right similarly i'll go to torsion and i'll say it can go to 2 to 4 there is a definite 
two mark problem on columns and you can say this is 4 2 6 now the reason we are i'm saying this is star mark because when you go to the dynamic stability part you will be using all these degree of uh, one degree of freedom system two degree of freedom system equations which you will be calculating or deriving the equations for diameter and dam so guys fix this vibration is most important in structures only I am saying 4 to 6 but they will relate this with dynamic stability then you can add this to 2 marks or 4 marks also so this can individually go to 10 so structure is fixed for 20 you can go to 25 after that if you will get a problem on theory of failures you will get it for 4 this is not mandatory they will ask but if they will ask they will usually ask a 4 mark problem and all the strain energy and this is in between a way of computing all these things what I have mentioned like uh, deflection of a beam so strain energy is not a particular chapter it is a different way of computing the things what we have seen before all right so books you should follow is first book we should always follow is Timoshenko and Gehry guys this is best book you can say for gate people you should always go for this and we all know for aircraft structures Megzen is a high standard book. Timoshenko and Gere is basic of structures. When I say basics, it's very very good basics. You cannot skip any of this. So it, this is a must book. And this is must book when you talk about particularly about aircraft like thin wall, shear flow, shear center, all these things. So Megzen is a good book. Now apart from this, I can say Brune and I can say Perry, all these things. But what I sh should you should always focus on these two books first refer lectures go through the notes practice all the gate problems practice test and tutorial problems if you have doubt then you should refer uh, some other books on that particular topic itself is it fine so now in all because structure is a lengthy topic so i think we have extended the time for this lecture so uh, in next lecture when we we'll go for module 2 you'll be uh, we'll be starting with basic elasticity Alright, so this is the structure uh, module we have. So, uh, okay, let's keep this lecture short. Let's close this. Uh, we'll meet in the next lecture. Stay tuned and we'll be starting in the next lecture in the more technical part like uh, basic elasticity. Alright, please like, uh, please if you have any feedback, anything which you want me to add, please feel free to give your feedback. It's always welcome. Alright, you can also comment in the section. You can always write to us at info at the rate goodwillgate2it.com. Uh, you can visit our website which is www.goodwillgate2it.com and you can call us on the displayed number anytime. Alright, so stay tuned. We'll meet in the second lecture. Thank you guys.